This illustration changed the course of human history and has saved thousands, if not millions, of lives. If you want to know how, then we're going to have to journey into the mind of a genius. In order to understand the drawing of the Vitruvian Man as a work, we have to first understand that it's not a piece in itself. This is part of a continued practice of study by Leonardo. It's also a contribution to a field of work that first started with the Roman architect Vitruvius from the first century BC. Technically, da Vinci's drawing isn't even the first Vitruvian man, there's a couple of other examples knocking about from the same period that are drawn to Vitruvius's specifications of the ideal human proportions. Vitruvius's ideas were having a bit of a resurgence in Italy at the time, with the discovery of some of his older works in book collections. The Renaissance was in full swing in Italy, and geniuses like Leonardo were very much in vogue, as Irene Adler would say. Definitely the new sexy. And who's going to argue with that? The field of science was a hotbed of activity at the time, and the Vitruvian Man is often seen as the poster child example of a revolutionary combination, utilising art to further the field of science. First, let's examine the illustration itself. The Vitruvian Man is a picture of a human male, front facing, with his arms outstretched around him. The picture is designed to showcase differing stances and motions of movement simultaneously, with the arms and legs outstretched to different points around the figure. It also includes side-on poses of the legs and feet. Each of these appendages is meticulously placed within a square and then superimposed over a circle. Perhaps the most interesting thing about the piece is that it's not a work of art, not in and of itself. Most people never see the full picture of the Vitruvian Man because they only see the image itself. If we draw back a little though, you can see that this is the illustration for a textbook, so not a work of art designed to be hung on a wall and admired as a painting. The text on the page describes the theories of Vitruvius with regards to the average proportions of the human body, a set of principles that Vitruvius designs a lot of his architecture around. Most of these are fairly common knowledge today, like the span of the arms being equal to the height of a given person, or that if you draw a circle centering on a person's navel, then the fingertips of their outstretched arms will just touch the edge of the circle. Leonardo actually backed a lot of this up by taking measurements of his own, so the illustration is a diagram of Vitruvius's discoveries. Yet it's not totally that either, is it? Look closer at the face. The intense stare, the intricacy of the flowing locks of hair, the detail on the fingers and the feet. That's useless in an instructional diagram, so why put it in the painting? As I said, this picture is a culmination of several years of work, a thesis for a new way of looking at the world proposed by Leonardo. He wasn't just an artist after all. Most people are familiar with his engineering and science drawings. He pioneered mechanics like flight and mechanical torsion, friction and certain kinds of gears. Most of his mechanical creations were never actually made, but the theories within them were years ahead of their time. When he created the Vitruvian Man, Leonardo was living off sponsorship brought about by those designs. Originally funded by the Medici in Florence, Leonardo had fallen out of favour with them and was seeking alternative employment. For this, he went to the Duke of Milan, Ludovico Maria Sforza. Leonardo didn't approach Sforza as a painter, though. He approached him as a designer of weapons. Da Vinci's initial designs included multi-shot crossbows and cannons, mortars and scatterguns, scythe chariots, and even an initial design for a medieval tank. Weapons like those in the diagrams wouldn't appear on battlefields for decades after this, with the tank in particular only making an appearance at the end of World War I. In fact, the thing holding back most of those designs, particularly flight, was the lack of an adequate power source. That sounds familiar. Who'd have thought that a meeting with Leonardo da Vinci would have essentially boiled down to this? For your consideration, the Jericho. It certainly worked though. Sforza was a violent individual living in a violent time. Essentially, the rulers of medieval Italian cities were running militarized crime families, and he was facing down heavyweights like the Medici and the Borgias. He was willing to take any advantage he could to get over his contemporary adversaries, and Leonardo's machines certainly offered him that. There were other discoveries that Leonardo was working on that were linked to this, though. Discoveries that could offer help on the battlefield in a different way. Leonardo's grand overarching scientific theory was that the natural world could be studied through detailed scientific visual observation. This doesn't sound that revolutionary to us until we realise that most of the scientific texts at the time were almost entirely text. 
Very little in the way of diagrams or pictures was included in the body of classical text. Leonardo sought to change this by the development of the scientific diagram into an art form. It's prevalent throughout his mechanical designs, but where it really comes in most importantly is here. Those sketches were made by da Vinci as part of his anatomical studies. They were mostly drawn for his own benefit rather than professional pieces, but Sforza was still the guy writing the checks. What would the head of a crime family want with a greater knowledge of anatomy? Hey Louis, I want another of them pictures, but this time showcasing an explanation of the proportions of the human body. Preferably how the arms and the legs measures up in comparison to the torso. Preferably placed in a square shape, such as might be made by a shower curtain. Preferably contained within a circle, such as might be made by a foundation column of wet cement. Them's awfully precise specifications, boss. That a request for more information, Louis? No way, boss, just an observation. Fun as that would have been, no. The work that Leonardo was completing was valuable to a completely different section of battlefield expertise. Less about putting people in the ground, and more about keeping them out of it. The study of medicine was a complex one in the Renaissance. New ideas of scientific inquiry were smashing up against the older models and creating interesting comparisons. For example, the old classical model of the four elements, five if you ask Aristotle, suggested that the human body was comprised of fire, water, earth and air, or rather that the component parts of the body corresponded to those elements. You can see examples of it in da Vinci's studies, he compared the bones of the body as being like rocks or earth, the support structure that formed the basis of the body's ecosystem. Da Vinci decided to utilise his theory to go searching for scientific truth through artistic observation. Initially his anatomical studies were to increase the accuracy of his art, studying how the muscles and skeleton interacted to create more accurate movements in his pictures. As he kept looking though, his studies turned to the organs and the inner workings of the body. His mechanical mind took over and he began moving into the realm of proper anatomy, identifying the brain as the centre of human intelligence and the importance of the heart and the lungs as life-giving organs. His diagrams would prove invaluable to the study of surgery throughout the centuries, especially to the birth of modern surgery in Edinburgh around the 1800s. Look at these diagrams. See the similarity? Da Vinci basically pioneered the practice of anatomical drawings within the scientific community, and the Vitruvian man stood as the central image underpinning all of it. It's become a linchpin of the intersection between science and art, an image so central to the way we think about human anatomy that it was included on the plaque of the Curiosity rover that we sent to Mars. Da Vinci so embodied the human race that we decided to send his vision of us out to the stars. It's a dream to be aspired to by many a biological scientist. And one I am sure you shall achieve, master. Silence, Igor. No one must know of our plans. Of course, master. Now it's pronounced Igor. Silence. Back to your hole. Yes, master. <clears throat> Just ignore that. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. If you've got any art you'd like us to review, or perhaps you've noticed the birth of a modern scientific field in other pieces, let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the little bell icon if you'd like to hear more from us about art in the future. For now it's been great to share with you and I'll see you in the next video.